First Thessalonians chapter 5 and in verse 23. I'm about to preach a message that I have never preached before in all these 26 years. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 he said and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ that is I want your spirit to be whole whole means healed I want your soul also to be healed and whole and I want your body to be whole until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ so I'm speaking on that second part I title it emotional diseases diseases of the emotion The first objective of this study is to understand the nature of emotional diseases. The nature. And number two, to understand the solution to emotional diseases. Diseases of the emotion. It is well known that man is a tripartite being. That is, man is three in one. Man is a tripartite being. He is a spirit, lives in a body, and has a soul or mind. Again, man is a tripartite being, three in one being that has spirit, soul, and body. Man is a spirit lives in a body has a soul all three realms can be diseased the disease of the spirit is called sin the disease of the body is the physical ailments that we have the disease of the mind is the mental ailment and somebody's mind is not correct. Am I communicating? But when you come to the mind, there are still three departments of the mind or the soul. Are we still together? Three departments of the mind. Number one, the will. The will is the center for decision where you make your choice. Number two, the intellect. The intellect is the center for learning or intelligence. Number three, so the mind has the will where you make choices, has the intellect center for learning and intelligence and has the emotion which is center for feeling and well-being i'm not feeling well today i'm feeling low i'm feeling sad i'm feeling depressed i'm feeling this or feeling that they are all functions of Of the mind somebody say amen what is what we want to deal majorly with now is that third level the diseases of the emotion that is where most of the problems lie apart from the mental illness the diseases of the emotion the diseases of the feeling many human beings are not physically sick but they are emotionally sick they don't have a pain in the body, but there is something paining them in their feeling. 
I'm going to look at four of these in the services of today. And the first one we want to see the disease of the emotion number one we want to look at is fear. Is a disease of the emotion, fear. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven. The Bible said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of law, of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. God has not given us the spirit of fear. So we are dealing with the spirit of fear. First John chapter 4, verse 18. First John chapter 4, verse 18. He said, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear has a torment. That is why it's a disease. It has a torment. And he that feareth is not made perfect in love. Fear has a torment. And then Job chapter 3 and in verse 25. The things which I feared, I greatly feared, is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. So fear has the capacity to attract the physical equivalent of what you fear. You fear disease, you attract disease. You fear premature death, you attract it. Now, what is fear all about? The Oxford de definition of fear says that fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger, pain, or harm. Again, fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger, pain, or fear. Somebody feels threatened that danger is ahead. That pain is ahead or harm is ahead. That emotion that he feels by that threat is called fear. It's an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger, of pain, or of harm. Someone say amen. In medicine, you have to make a diagnosis before you go to treatment. Now, what are the causes of fear? What are the, what are the roots of fear? The causes or the roots of fear? Number one, repeated personal or family cycle or history of negativity or adversity. Again, repeated personal or family cycle or history of negativity or adversity. Again, repeated personal or family cycle or history that is there is a personal cycle that is repeated or a family cycle that is repeated a personal history that is repeated or a family history that is repeated and this cycle or history is negative is adverse and is coming up all the time when that happens fear can be better for example a woman testified last time she had an accident in the month of March. And that accident, I think, broke her leg or something. Another March, she had another accident. And that accident caused something. So the moment March begins to come, she began to fear. How many of you heard that testimony? And then, she said in one of the services, I announced and I said, there is a woman here that is afraid of March. You don't have to be afraid of March. You will not die in the month of March. And that cloak just disappeared on the spot. The devil put a cycle, a history that brought fear. A repeated cycle. Now, there are family histories where people die at a certain time, a certain month. Or maybe a certain pattern of disease. You know, plague the family, a cancer, something. And then, the people become afraid. One day a lady told me, a young lady, mother died of a cancer. The senior sister died of the same type of cancer. Mother died at 45. Sister died at 25. She was 25. And this began to, she began to feel the symptoms. And as I was about to answer, the Lord said, that was the spirit of fear that was bringing back that cycle. And I stand today to curse every negative cycle and every negative history in your life and in your family that is a root cause of fear. I declare it broken right now in the name of Jesus.
you will not die like your father died and you will not die like your sister died and you will not die like your mother died and you will not die like your brother died and you will not die like people are dying in your family if you are saying amen shout the Lord and say amen number two root of fear or cause of fear is continuous openness and exposure to negative news or report continuous openness or exposure and exposure to negative news or report that is your ear is open all the time to negative news either from the media from movies or from bearers of negative news and negative report. I remember children who watched a movie, a fearful movie, and that is the end. And they became afraid permanently. When you fail to check what enters your ears, what enters your eyes, there are those who have found themselves in some mysterious kind of world by watching a horror movie or listening to some horrible stories. Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 11 showed that what you hear determines what you fear. And all Israel shall hear and fear. They shall hear and fear. What you hear affects what you fear. What you watch affects what you fear. I've seen people say, oh, there is so, such and such a thing happens so and so place. Can I send you the videos? I said, oh, please, don't, I, I don't need to. I'm not, I'm not interested. I want to guard my heart. Very, very important. Continuous exposure. And number, number three, root of fear. I call it prolonged shortage of vision. Revelation, positive expectation, or faith in the heart. Prolonged shortage of vision, revelation, positive expectation, or faith in the heart. When the heart is empty of a vision, a future, when the heart is empty of revelation or whatever God is saying, when the heart is empty of expectation, this guy is expecting nothing. When the heart is empty of faith, fear rushes in. When the heart is bankrupt of word-based vision, word-based revelation, word-based expectations or faith, it is left to negative expectations and negative anticipation. Am I communicating? I'd like you to understand that there is no vacuum in nature. If the seed does not grow, the weed will grow. If the seed does not grow, the weed will grow. There is no vacuum in nature. If there is no positive expectation, it will be replaced with negative anticipation. If you are expecting nothing positive, it will be replaced with anticipation of things negative. If you are not looking forward to anything good, you will be looking forward to things evil. There is no vacuum in nature. I mean, you cannot fill your heart with what God said to you. And what you, you know you must become in life. And the devil fill your heart at the same time with what he wants to do. No matter how desperate the darkness is. It cannot survive in the midst of the abundance of light. Am I communicating? No matter how desperate the fear is. It cannot survive in the midst of the abundance of positive expectation and anticipation. Somebody say a loud amen. Having said all of that, what is the treatment of fear? 
What is the solution? Number one, guard your heart consciously and continuously against negative news, reports, or stories. Guard your heart continuously, consciously and continuously against negative news, negative reports, negative stories. There are some you may not have, you may not be able to avoid. You just it just happened to flow into your ears. But don't, don't look for negative news. Don't look for negative stories. Don't look for negative reports. Don't dwell on the negative. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 said, Guard your heart, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Somebody say a loud amen. Just watch over your heart. Watch over your heart. Watch over your heart. I told you this funny story I, 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 that happened to me. I went to one, one city in this town in the southwest of this nation for a program one day. And then um, the, the protocol officer or whoever it was that picked me from the airport had no other story to tell me other than how terrible and wicked the armed robbers in the town are. That is the story he's telling a stranger who is arriving in the town for the first time. He said, in this city, armed robbers, they are so... He said, the way they operate, it breaks their heart. They are operation as if they are not human beings. He said, the way they operate, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he said, it's so terrible. <sighs> I was just listening to this man. What are you talking about? And then he went and dropped me in the hotel and left. <laughs> Upon on top of that, the hotel has no light. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, no matter how man of faith you are, there are things you must not allow yourself to hear. Maybe I would have shut him up on this. If it is today, I would have shut him up. Shut up! it was today you know many times I, I use one experience to know what to do another time that was how he left me alone in the hotel and I had to I had to use my faith against witches and lizards and against robbers and wicked people overnight am I communicating just consciously if it is avoidable Use your faith for other things. Guard against negative news, negative reports. And I believe that it's a new day for somebody. Number two, how do you deal with a plague of fear? You renew your mind continually. Renew your mind continually with the word of God. For faith to be established. Renew your mind continually with the word of God for faith to be established. Because if faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word, fear liveth by hearing and hearing the word. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. If faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God, fear liveth by hearing and hearing the word of God. Charge your mind. If you are afraid of flight, next time you step into an aircraft, just plug your ears with preservation message and fly throughout from one to another to another to another. If it will crash you will not enter if you have entered it cannot crash it will be ringing in your ears throughout am I communicating now what will the word of God also do the word of God will fill your heart with vision fill your heart with revelation and fill your heart with expectation the word of God gives you the picture of your future and that is and, and that is where, what the absence of such is what makes fear to thrive so apart from installing faith in your heart, 
the word of God fills your heart with vision, fills your heart with expectation, fills your heart with a picture of your future, where you are meant to be, where God wants you to be. And when that is being installed, the space for fear is practically zero. Thirdly, what do you do to handle fear? When we say renew your mind, it's Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. What do you do to, to, to handle fear? Number three, deal decisively and continually with the spirit of fear by the word and prayer. It is understood that fear is not just an emotion, fear is a spirit. You deal decisively and continually with the spirit of fear by the word of God and by prayer. Fear is not just a feeling, it's a spirit that must be dealt with. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 said, God has not given us the spirit of fear. He has not given us the spirit of fear. So fear is a spirit and fear must be dealt with decisively. Today, every spirit of fear is under the curse right now. You know, people fear different things. Fear of failing. Fear of the unknown. Fear of the future. Even fear of getting married. Because of how they saw how someone's marriage failed or their parents' marriage failed or something. Fear of premature death. And all that forms of phobia. Fear of height. Fear of this. Fear of that. You deal decisively with fear by the word of God and by prayer. What, right now, everything called the spirit of fear in the heart and in the life of anyone here, I command it cause to its roots in the name of Jesus. I declare that fear arrested back to hell. Say a loud amen. Lift your right and say in the name of Jesus. Fear has no place in my life and in my heart. I receive freedom from fear now in Jesus' name. Did God speak to someone here at all? Let me give you disease number two for this morning service. It's called low self-esteem. Low self-esteem. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 20, 28. God made man in his image. After his likeness. And God said let them have dominion. Our concern is God made man in his image. God said let us make man in our image. And in verse 28, 27. And, and, and so God created man in his own image. Psalm 139 verse 14. He said I will praise you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. What is low self-esteem? Low self-esteem is low confidence in one's own worth or abilities. Low confidence in your worth, in your value. Confidence in your ability is low. You don't believe in yourself. You, you find it hard to believe that you are worth it. This is a major plague among many today. Low confidence in one's own worth or abilities. I'm sure that was how Jacob thought about himself. When God spoke to him in Isaiah chapter 41 verse 14. When he said, fear not, O thou warm, warm, warm. Jacob where you consider yourself like a worm I am a nothing I am a nobody trampleable I trampled upon fear not oh thou warm Jacob where you appear, appear like you are just nothing what is low self esteem it's a reduced sense of value a reduced sense of value reduced sense of worth Reduce sense of meaning of a one, one, one own life. Your, your value of your own life is reduced. 
a reduced sense of value, a reduced sense of worth, a reduced sense of meaning. It is the brother, the twin of what they call inferiority complex. Where you see yourself lower than others. You are not as good as others. You are not, you are just, you are just there. Others look like they are living the real life. You look like a shadow. That devil is a bastard. I am against that demon here this morning. And it will not have any power over your life. And that yoke is broken right now. In the name of Jesus. You may see some people looking fine and looking well. But right inside them, there is an inferiority complexity. There is a sense of low worth and low value. And he's dying today. The reason why it's important is because confidence affects competence. It determines competence. There are many who cannot be everything they are, they are meant to be in life because they are not confident in their, in their worth, in their value. What is, what are the roots or causes of low self-esteem? Number one, prolonged exposure to negative words and deficiency of positive aff affirmation. Particularly in growing up years. Prolonged exposure to negative words with a deficiency of positive affirmation, especially in growing up years. Hmm. When they, when you, when if you grew up, and the only thing you kept hearing were negative things. You are not good enough. You will never be good. You will never do anything well. When such words are continuously hurled at people, especially by authority figures, when the only thing a father or a mother can be hurling at the children are negative things, what they can do well, how they are not good enough. Our classroom teacher, some of you teachers, you are very guilty of destroying the destiny of many people. The children were not brought to you for you to ruin their esteem. To destroy their, their confidence. Somebody's child, and then you just kept on insulting the child, coconut head, this and that. The children grew up and they moved like a shadow of themselves. One of the greatest things my mother did for her children. You will never catch one wrong word from her mouth. If you did wrong, she would just look at you one kind. In other words, I'm not happy. I feel disappointed that you did this. But you're okay. You will do well. Even though I came up as a child against several things that could have killed esteem, it wasn't killable. My wife testifies to me today. I don't feel inferior to no mortal under heaven. Under heaven by his message. Whether black, white, yellow, anywhere in the world, shoulders raised, not with pride, but with healthy estimation. Am I communicating? Anything that is seeking to destroy your esteem today, I declare it arrested forever. Somebody say it louder, amen. Somebody say it louder, amen. Somebody shout the loudmost, amen. 
Somebody say amen at the top of your voice. You, you, you are going to be good. It is going to be well with you. And it's already well with you. That is prolonged exposure. Take your seat. Number two. Continuous comparison of people with others deemed to be better than them. Continuous comparison of people with others that are deemed to be better than them. The, in the first part, the scripture was Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 where it said, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But what is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto your hearers. And now we are dealing with continuous comparison of people with others deemed to be better than them. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and in verse 12. He said, For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves they are not wise. Those who measure themselves with themselves, those who compare themselves among themselves are not wise. Keep on comparing your children with other people's children. I went to so-and-so house and this, and this was what the child was doing. You should do like this. In a very discouraging and disparaging manner, it can destroy the sense of worth and value of people. Husband comparing someone's wife with his own wife, this and that, and saying that to them in a very discouraging manner. It can destroy esteem. Most times, this comparison goes hand in hand with fault finding. There are those who don't know what it means to commend, it, commend the people of their life. They, they have never commended. They are very generous in condemnation. But stingy with commendation. Did you hear what I said? Very generous with condemnation. Drop this. You didn't do well. Drop that. You didn't do that. Drop this. You didn't do well. And when the person has done well, they won't say anything. Madame is always making mistakes. But when he didn't make mistakes, why didn't you say anything? That's poverty of leadership. You are, in fact, the leader at most times is actually more generous with commendation than condemnation. Am I communicating at all? Your children quarreled from outside and it is the people who look for the child's trouble and run home. And you are still insulting the child in front of the people. Who look for his trouble? No matter what happened, it is all, it's the children that is, are always wrong. No matter what happened, it's your wife that is always wrong. No. Don't finish people like that. Because what you are doing, you are destroying the worth of the people. Destroying their sense of value and ultimately destroying their destiny. Because when they will move, they are, they are held back. When they, should, when they should go aggressively, they are held back. Oh, I'm not good enough. I, I, I can't do enough. You see, if you don't have anything good to say, don't talk at all. One day in the university, I was singing a song. And a young man came to me and said, I haven't heard a voice as bad as this voice. He said, don't bother singing. Voice is not good. I looked at him. I didn't, I didn't answer him. If I listen to him, the song that the choir sang today, you won't hear it. The songs. You won't hear it. And most times, crude oil is not on the surface. 
the gold is not on the surface. So what you are seeing about most people is their surface. You have not entered their depth to see what is inside. And I, have, I am convinced that desire is proof of potential. There is a connection between some, what someone desires and what he carries. Huh? You cannot, you see, if there was no food, you wouldn't be hungry. Hunger is confirmation that food exists. There is something called food. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying here? I, 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 I say something now and you're saying it's very deep. Desire is proof of potential. Look at this. He said, in the last day of the feast, Jesus said, if any man thirst, let him come. You are looking for water, let come. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living. You are looking for a cup of water and there is a river inside you. Let me show you the river you carry. You are desiring a cup because you carry a river. <laughs> because you are warehousing a river. And that is why something about you is always looking for water. There is a river inside. I prophesy healing to everyone here that they have painted, they have painted you very bad and painted you until you don't, you don't like yourself. There are those who stand in front of the mirror and they hate what they see. I've come across people in council and they said, I never want to look at myself in the mirror. See, I hate what I see in the mirror. That is a satanic agenda. I like myself when I stand in front of a mirror. Like myself, I just use me. My wife, my wife says to me, your dress looks so sharp. I said, thank you, I am aware. Ask her, she will tell you. All the time. She will tell you. Thank you, I'm fully aware. You are telling me what I am aware of. But I'm not despising that you told me. But I'm fully aware. If you wait for external encouragement, you may die discouraged. Encourage yourself first. And then when an external person encourages you, irrespective of who they are, it becomes a synergy of energy. A synergy of awareness. Was so sharp, I'm aware. Thank you, man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But let me tell you something. I and the children that the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and for wonders. There is no inferior person here because we are not we are not in an inferior church. We are not an inferior church, and I'm not past I am not an inferior personality. I can't pass to an inferior person. We were with the president of Kenya and his wife in the Kenya trip. And the wife told the husband, the first lady, he said, I have worshipped in that church before. And I want you to worship. He said, you need to go there. The husband said, really? Big church, 100,000 seats. That is beautiful. He said, some things are big but not beautiful. Are you following what I'm saying here today? They are showing you the president and his wife and your pastor and his wife. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I announce to you today in the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord. You shall, you shall arrive at your destination. Every spell, every spell of low self-esteem is destroyed right now. 
You are saying amen. Shout the loudest, amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. I told you I have not preached this before. And I'm sure it is benefiting someone. Number three thing that destroys people's esteem. I call it insults. Bordering on defects or deficiencies of life. When people are confronted with insults that borders on their defects or deficiencies. You know, heartless and wicked people can say anything to anybody anytime. To ridicule and to insult. When you say somebody is too short, did the person create himself or herself? Somebody is too is too tiny. You are too your nose is too big. Head is too big. The other day it was as if I was shot. Shot as if some as if a, a gun shot me. God forbid. But what somebody was talking to, to his own child in a way that I was so amazed. He was talking, it was like a joke. And I'm only saying it for the sake of lesson. He said, this is my, he said, I, I, when I just turned, I thought that this, that was my wife. He was talking to the daughter because that he looked so much like his wife. He said, but I thank God my wife is taller than you. Your own child that you brought forth. He said, ah, what statement is this? You gave birth to her. Did she make herself shorter than her mother? There are, this kind of thing can live as a deposit. I am not adequate. I like us to be a bit more loving. I am not up to my mother. I may not be up to my mother. A bit more loving. Some people enter a room and say, what is smelling? Maybe the person is having problem with halitosis, foul breath. Which is battling with to try to resolve it. Doesn't know what to do. Some people just block their nose uh, in front of the person. The person has a challenge. Why should you rub it in? Now, please, they call something insult of body. That is, that is insult that borders on the person's physical makeup. Don't do that. One boy told me, he said, the young man now, he said, he used to carry pen and pencil and things as a child. And every time he's coming, his father said, Tiff, 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 Tiff. That was how he became a thief. He grew up. And he said, he keeps hearing this, the voice. Anytime he sees something, the voice says, take it, nobody's looking. Even things he didn't need. This insults also can... It's also tied to abuse situations. The other day, my wife was praying for a young lady who had molestation as a child. Wicked robbers enter a place and they didn't just go to steal abuse their victims. And that one grew up with a low sense of value. Today, I prophesy healing. If you are saying amen, say a louder amen. If you are saying amen, say a louder amen. 
If you are saying amen, say louder amen. amen. I stand here today by spiritual jurisdiction and spiritual legislation and spiritual authority. Any wrong words that has affected your mind, affected your life, affected your sense of value, I declare them retrieved and refired back to hell. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy wholeness to you, wholeness to your mind. I, I believe God is doing something today. It's like somebody is being reborn. Your mind is being reborn. Your confidence is coming back. Your value and your worth is coming back. I am here to announce to somebody. It is not the same you who entered here this morning that shall be walking out of the doors this morning. There is a processing going on in your life. You believe it, shout the loudest. Amen. Give the Lord the praise and take your seat. What is the solution? What do you do in the treatment of low self-value? When I say people compare themselves, people compare you with others. Also, when you try to compare yourself with others, it can make you have a low feeling about yourself. What is the treatment? Number one, always see yourself the way God sees you. Never agree to see yourself the way the enemy the world or the devil tries to see you. Always see yourself the way God sees you. Never agree to see yourself the way the enemy, the world, or the devil tries to see you. Always see yourself the way God sees you. Never agree to see yourself the way the enemy of the world or the devil tries to see you. Always see yourself. In Psalm 139 verse 14, he said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am not wretchedly made. I am not pitiably made. I am not to be pitied. I am fearfully made. I am wonderfully made. I am a, a, a prized piece of God's creation. I am a man of very high worth and value. If you doubt me, ask God. You see, nobody can look down on you without your permission. And nobody can devalue you without your participation. So make up your mind. You make up your mind. You make up your mind. Number, all right. Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. The Bible said, we are like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And so were we in their sight. The enemy will see you the way you see yourself. See yourself the way God sees you. Number two. Always learn to use positive, empowering, and edifying words. Both on yourself and on others. Always learn to use positive, empowering, and edifying words. Both on yourself and on others. It says there is that speaking like the piercings of a sword. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 18. There is someone who speaks like the piercings of a sword. He said, but the tongue of the wise is held. I am not a failure. You are talking to yourself. You are standing right in front of the mirror. This person here, I am not a, a failure. Or wherever you want to stand. I am not frustrated. I can't be defeated. I refuse to live as a failure. And I refuse to die without succeeding. I am not inferior to nobody under heaven. Nothing is wrong with me. God is right with me. And if God be for me, no devil can be against me. That is for yourself. Right? There are those who just have everything. Huh? They say, oh, I heard you got promotion. They say, oh, dash monkey banana. That means you are a monkey, isn't it? There are 
are people when they, when people say you are looking fine, they suspect the people. Say, are you insulting me? To them, it's like mockery. They they cannot they they, they are not trained to uh, to receive positive affirmation. They don't have the capacity to enjoy affirmation. If you are not like me, who will say I am aware? At least we can say thank you. I'm appreciative. And you look good yourself too. <laughs> Don't say it very rudely. Oh. My wife understands me. That's why she, she's okay with that. Because if you tell some people like that, you, that, that looks very rude. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And then, life is a seed. Use positive quality words on others. Everyone around me knows that my greatest desire is to make people feel correct. To feel well and feel right. Just, just to enhance people's worth and value. Do that. Do that for your children. When children don't get affirmation from parents, they try to look for it outside. Do that for your children. School teachers, do that for your pupils. The parents did not send the children to your school so you can destroy their value and destroy their self-confidence. A child answers the, the question wrongly. Don't shout them down like that. Say, so oh, look at you. I know you will answer wrong. You answer it wrongly all the time. When will you learn? In the front of other children, God will hold you responsible if you destroy ch the children under your care. Children, church teachers, the same thing. Somebody say aloud, loud amen. Continuously. Words, positive words, a defined words, empowering words, both on yourself and on others. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So as you continue to speak to yourself and speak to others positively, all of a sudden you begin to believe it. You are convinced that you are successful. Don't use people's behavior to confirm your, your quality. People will act many times to make you feel like you are nothing. Forget about their actions. Am I communicating at all? People will speak at times to feel like you don't mean anything, you don't amount to anything. Forget about them. And face your life. If you greeted a person once, twice, thrice, and he did not respond to your greeting, it's not compulsory to continue greeting. It's not compulsory. You understand? Don't let anybody destroy your sense of value and quality. God knows your heart. You don't have anything against them. But don't let anybody make you look like you are nothing. Another thing is to avoid them. If your hand offends you, the Bible says cut it off. That's disconnect, just disconnect. Do you hate them? No. Are they your friends? Also no. Who are they? You know them. Why are you avoiding them? You want to protect your own heart. You want to protect your own heart. You want to protect your dignity. You want to protect your sense of value. Nobody can devalue you so you don't allow them to devalue you. I am very respectful. If I say good morning, sir, good morning, sir, good morning, sir, and I say sir, sir, sir to you until you begin to make it look like I am ogre, I withdraw my sir. I, I just withdraw it. I, I withdraw the saration. Because it means that you don't deserve it. Is it? Give. Don't give holy things to dog. Don't throw your pearl before the swine. 
Am I communicating at all? Draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Is that not what, Jesus, what, what God said? Draw near to me. Oh, people say if somebody say you are the one, you say he's the one too. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just, just ensure. Somebody is giving you money and insulting you on top of the money. Just leave the money alone and face your front. Let money come from another side. There's nothing compulsory in this life, like I said, except to go to heaven. And there is nobody more related to you than yourself. <laughs> do you understand the meaning of that? The best thing anybody can do for you is what you don't you have you are doing for yourself. Hallelujah. That's how I live my life. Anywhere, anywhere. Well, good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Very respectful. But you behave like a pompous Nebuchadnezzar. You are on your own. You are on your own. You are on your own. And I've dealt with so many people. People at my level. People are higher than me. Older than me. Say good morning, sir. Say good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So there is that mutual saturation. I respect his age. He respects my grace. I respect his title. He respects my mantle. <laughs> hey! 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 Hey, 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 hey! Stand up on your feet, everybody. I know you received something this morning. Stand up on your feet this morning. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. In all that we do, the love of God guards us. But protect your heart. Protect your sense of value. Protect, protect your sense of worth. Don't let anybody look at your face and destroy your value in your eyes. Don't have any friend that is always speaking on you and showing you your fault. Permanently. The only thing they can tell you is what you cannot do. Now if it is constructive, it is okay. If they are trying to assist you to be better, it comes in love and you will understand it. But if it is coming permanently in a negative form, put you down and make you feel, just find your level. Find your level. Husband, speak good, good things to your wife. Make them feel well. Consciously and consistently. I do that to the people of my life. My, my wife, my children. I thank you because it is you that God gave me the privilege to marry. If I am going to marry again, it will still be you. Things like that. Things like that. And when you say it, mean it. <laughs> Don't say it, Nikud. Mean it. No matter what things you think is wrong with your wife, find the things that are right with her. Comment on them. No matter what things you think are wrong with your husband, find the things that are right with your husband. Comment on them. Nobody can read your silence. You don't love me. You mean I don't love you? Yes, she has the right to say so. When was the last time you said it? And love, hear, comment by hearing. <laughs> <laughs> and hearing by the words of love <laughs> praise the Lord one of the things that can make people feel low is when they are taken for granted you are just there just taken for granted tolerated 
Just there. Don't take people for granted. Don't take anybody for granted. And I believe that the Lord will help you and help us and repair anything that is damaged in our lives. Is anybody blessed today? In the second service, I will deal with two more. I will deal with this, the disease of worry and anxiety. Where people are infected with worry worm. And then I will deal with the devil of rejection. It is very related to low self-worth. But it's a different category altogether. I want you, having listened to this, if you, are, if you, if you, if you didn't listen to this, I want you to, to, to pick up the message. And then, pick up the second service message. We are dealing with emotional diseases. We'll deal with four today, there are more. But I believe that God is healing us already. Lift your hands and lift your voice and let's give him the praise. Give him the honor. Give him the adoration. Give him the worship. Give him the worship. Father, we worship you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Father, we magnify you. Be glorified. Be honored. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your two hands everywhere you are. And say after me, say, Father. Father. I come before you today. I come before you today. To reject. To reject. To refuse. To refuse. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. I come before you, Lord, today. I come before you, Lord, today. To refuse. To refuse. And reject, and reject the spirit of inferiority. The spirit of inferiority. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I, receive I receive my healing. I receive my wholeness. I receive my, I receive my deliverance. I receive, I receive it now. Ah. Open your mouth and pray. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah